Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing well. So today I'm gonna be showing you how I have been painting my backdrops recently. This is a technique I have evolved with. I didn't start this way, but I think after you paint quite a few backdrops, you start to understand better, you know, how it blends better or how it, get, you know, it adds more texture or how it looks nicer to you. There is no right or wrong, whatever you feel like is nice, uh, it should be nice. So it's it's really fun to do it. I love creating backdrops. I wish I just had, I had like a big warehouse where I could just paint uh, on my spare time. All right, so uh, without any further ado, I'm just gonna change the camera now so you can see how I do my backdrops. If it doesn't work, it's paint. You can always repaint it and carry on. All right, I'm gonna show you in a minute. The backdrop is already primed, as you can see. I'm also using a plastic cover to not stain my floor. And I'm also using this Basics Acrylic Gesso by Liquitex. You can find this on Amazon and it's very affordable. I'm also repurposing an old bottle of gesso. Uh, just make sure it's clean and free from other paint. And then I just add black paint about here and then some water just to make it more liquid. And I'm repurposing an old bottle of water with white paint. And this is about what you need. This is my inspiration image by Annie Leibovitz with Diane Keaton. And the backdrop, of course, is an elephant. And I really love that backdrop and that's why I'm doing my own. So first thing, you open the bottle. <laughs> Prepare to be amazed. And it's very simple. You're just going to spread the paint all over like this. I want to go for a distressed look. There is no right or wrong, just, you know, add a, a little bit. Don't, don't add too much, just do a Jackson Pollock. And I'm going to use a roller brush and it's, a, you know, it's an old one. It's not really dirty and you're just going to roll over the backdrop. It's not really dirty. I cleaned it. It's just, you know, dark, dark from previous use. And you're just going to roll it very gently over your backdrop. Just make sure you keep a very light hand so you know there's still moisture on the backdrop and you can just brush it all over it's okay to leave some areas not painted you know just leave some areas um, white um, and you just do this there is no right or wrong you just follow your instincts if you do if you mess up the worst thing you can do if you mess up you redo it you wait it to dry and you redo it now i'm gonna add the white paint, I'm going to add a bit here, a bit here, and now I'm just going to experiment with the texture and very gentle strokes, very, very gentle. And just a tip for you, when you, after you paint, of course, clean your brushes, but let it, uh, let it dry uh, completely and you're going to see that the brush becomes stiffer which is great because next time when you paint your backdrop, you have a textured brush that you know you created yourself. So don't throw don't throw them away. I absolutely love my old brushes. I only buy new ones once you know I can't really use them anymore. So this I've used it three times, I think, this brush. And there is another one that I haven't used on this video that I've had for, you know, maybe it's my first brush. I think it's my first brush. And it has like this amazing texture just because it's so old and stiff. Um, the fiber is just great for, you know, to create texture over your new backdrop. For the texture on this background, I do not have a guide. So because I use my old brushes that have kind of a texture on its own, which is great, I just keep brushing and whatever feels right to me, I just leave it. So I try not to overdo it because as soon as you start overdoing it, it becomes a never ending job and you don't want to be painting this backdrop forever. So I'm going to try and be as quick and efficient as possible with this job. And obviously <laughs> you get experience with time. This is my 10th backdrop and my first one, I still have it and I love it. Uh, I use now as a floor backdrop. This backdrop here is going to be my travel portable backdrop. I made it in a size that it's easy to carry and I want it to have a distressed look. The measurement for this tiny backdrop is one meter by 1.5. And I am absolutely in love with this backdrop. So far, the texture is exactly how 
I wanted. I did not know it was going to turn out this way. But I am more than happy. And I think I'm done. I think it's done. I'm quite tempted to go over it and fix some areas. But I think I will not. Because every time I do it, a 15-minute backdrop becomes a 3-hour backdrop. And I'm quite happy with this probably 5-minute backdrop. I... Yeah, so I'm just gonna go through it and maybe remove some white spots that have not been painted. So just super gentle strokes, just so you're absolutely sure there are no unpainted areas. But that's about it. Don't, don't overdo it. If you like the texture, keep it. Wait it for it to dry, you know, experience, trust me. So this is it, guys. I'm really happy with how it looks. I absolutely love the texture. I'm gonna be good and try not to go over it. I cannot wait for it to dry. So if this is gonna be your first time painting your backdrop, don't be scared. It can only get better from there. It gets better, I promise, if you've never done it. And plus, if you mess up, it's, it's not the end of the world. You can always redo it. And this is how the backdrop ends up looking.